audible now to everyone? Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Am I audible to you all? So that let's start the class. Voice is too low. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible to you all? I think yeah. I'm audible right now. Right? Clear? Is my voice clear now? Yes? Okay. Fine. So please drop a confirmation message if my voice is clear and audible to everyone so that we can go into the class. Today is a very important class. Because I'm going to introduce to introduce you to the best mains answer writing. Okay, fine. Yes. So best mains answer writing. What is this? See, we know very well that we have finished our prelims now. So I'm already telling you and I'm again repeating. Irrespective of the results, everybody should start preparing for the mains. That is the best way for the preparation process. So many what they do is like they start the preparation. They go till the preliminary examination. They see the results and then they decide that we'll prepare for the next examination and they don't go for the main cycle at all. But the proper way of preparing is you are writing the prelims then irrespective of your result because key might change, UPSC might release a different key, you might have checked a key, UPSC might release a different key. So always keep it in your mind that you are going to write your mains in the January and start preparing now. It can be your uh, GS and optional both. Clear? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon everyone. Fine. So today what I will tell you is how to write the best mains answer. Clear? That is what I am going to discuss today. This suits for all the papers, all the GS papers and the mains also. Mains I have already discussed, I mean the optionals I have already discussed in your optional channel. This is for GS and everything. So I will also give you another session related to essay separately. Clear how to approach essay, how to give a best essay, I will approach it separately. Clear? Today we will go into the session. So for this I would like to thank an academy uh, for giving me this opportunity. So welcome you all to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English channel. So India's largest learning platform is giving us so many benefits like daily live classes, structured courses live test quizzes and unlimited access like you can watch this video n number of times and please download this app in google app and play store and then about me i'm shubha kirtana i'm an engineer i have a good experience in teaching both civil services upsc and tnpsc i have mentored more than 100 even now thousand students after joining an academy i'm an anthropology faculty and i have experience in teaching neat also so you can join this telegram channel we have a telegram channel and a discussion group also where you can ask me many doubts i'm very happy to help you over there we'll talk about more materials everything and this is my uh, link for the unacademy channel so in this channel in the unacademy platform you can go and search for my profile so in that profile you'll be seeing many special classes so i have scheduled a special class tomorrow morning at 10 a.m so what is that special class about? I am going to discuss in detail about GS1, okay, paper 1, how to prepare for GS paper 1, clear? Yes. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. sharp, it's a special class, just go to an academy, you can go to my profile, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., please be present over there, I will be discussing GS, how to prepare for GS paper 1, a clear discussion for 2 hours, fine? Next. So we are, we are having an opportunity to interact with 100 plus top educators and the syllabus is also comprehensively covered. I already told you there is going to be a hike very soon in the fee structure. So please subscribe to Iconic or Plus. The only thing in the Iconic which is very special which is making it Iconic is along with the in-class support, you are also going to get out of class support, a personal coach, daily main answer writing session, study planner and personalized to feedback. If you are planning to give your attempt in 2021 and if you want to clear it immediately in the 2021 itself or you are planning to give your attempt in 2022 and I want to clear it immediately, go for Iconic because your preparation should be like prelims plus mains. 
not prelims after that let me see mains no that is a mistake everybody does what i'm telling you is it should be parallel and that you will get in the iconic properly designed structure which will you will be very much engaged and you'll be very much good in preparing that you can use my code s u b a the first half of my name so you get a 10 percentage of offer in your fees along with that you also have a no cost emi this is applicable for both plus and iconic you can use for both plus and iconic my code s u b a suba s u b a so you get a 10 percentage of offer do it as soon as possible because there is going to be a hike very soon so please don't you know uh, uh, pay extra fee okay thinking for taking a very long time thinking and paying an extra fee better you do it now itself and you can opt for no cost emi also coming to this so this is a special class so uh, tomorrow 10 am sharp in the morning don't forget 10 am we are going to discuss about gs paper 1 how to prepare for gs paper 1 clear fine introduction to best means answer writing so coming to introduction to best means answer writing i'm dividing it into two parts first part is before exam second part is during exam fine so before examination what you should do during examination what you should do you should be very clear about these two things fine so upsc examination is completely about strategy it's not like you are giving your hard work hard work never fails is fine but in examination it's not just hard work in the upsc it's not just hard work it is smart work along with the hard work clear so what you have to do is this before examination you are going to do smart work and hard work and during examination you are going to do smart work how i'll tell you fine first of all first and foremost thing is i want you all to download main syllabus so this is same for your optionals also it is same for your gs also every word in the syllabus should be in your mind you should know every word in the syllabus why two things two things will be you know uh, come in hand when you know every word in the syllabus number one you will get content how see in mains examination when you are using these words in the mains uh, syllabus and you are writing your answer will be really good number one you will get a very good content number two you will understand what you are going to study it's not just you know you are studying everything and anything actually saying it is like an ocean you know upsc is like an ocean you have n number of things to study everything to study but if you understand the syllabus if you understand what expecting from you actually you will have a territory within which you can prepare very well so two things number one is content so you will get content from the main syllabus number two is you will understand what you are going to study first and foremost thing is every word in the syllabus you should understand it first you should know the proper meaning and you should memorize the words also yes you heard me right you should know the proper meaning and you should memorize those words every word in the syllabus is must so what you are going to do is download the syllabus take a printout of syllabus and stick it in your room that every day you are going to read those syllabus again and again you can't just sit and memorize stick it in some place which is visible to you daily and you are going to read those words again and again daily clear so if you see the prelims syllabus and main syllabus main syllabus is somewhat detailed okay many words are given it is explained so which means that the explained form is sharp why i mean narrower compared to unexplained part so if you know all these words if you clearly understand all these words you are in number one number two a minimum of 200 words notes for each words in the syllabus clear in gs if you are studying about world history what are the words they are giving in world history for those things do you have notes so 200 words minimum of 200 notes for every word in the syllabus is must if you are talking about women related to women you should know about what are all the what is the position of women in our country and then you should know what are all the issues faced by women then what are all the functions of government what are all the governmental schemes and what are all the governmental legislations schemes and legislations clear and then what are all the private ngos if if ngos very successful ngos so these are like just under women you should know all these things 
if you know all these things you can actually write answer for gs1 you can write answer for gs2 you can write answer for gs4 which is ethics also in case studies you get questions related to women there also you should write government schemes and legislations so just by one topic if you have proper notes of these you can answer questions from gs1 gs2 gs4 and also essay questions related to women if you get essay questions related to women you can answer that also that is why i am telling you for every word you should have a 200 words notes clear that 200 notes words is going to help you in almost all the papers keep one thing in mind see this interlinking of syllabus content and subjects even though we have the division of gs1 paper 2 paper 3 paper 4 paper or optionals also actually i am telling you there is no clear cut border between these there is no clear cut division between these all these are interlinked among each other you also have essay do you think essay you are going to study separately no you are going to take content from these papers only your optionals only essay you are not going to study separately all these books you have right essay best essays that alone won't help you actually where you are going to take content is you are going to take content from all other subjects so the note preparation this part the minimum of 200 words this part is going to save you from everything this is what i am telling you as smart work plus hard work this is a smart work along with hard work which is going to save you everywhere okay some people were asking me give me you know uh, suggest me book ma'am suggest me note ma'am see even though i suggest you books that books will only help you 20 percentage the remaining you are to take your notes you are going to take the content from the current affairs clear you are understanding it so position of women issues government schemes legislations ngo everything you are going to get only from the current affairs and the content the you, this these are not static okay nowadays they are don't they are not asking much static questions mostly application based and current affairs based questions are asked so for that you should prepare your own notes you should be very clear about what is happening you should have a clear cut idea number 1 number 2 emphasis on important parts of syllabus so every syllabus will have more different kinds of weightage that how you can understand this by the previous year questions clear every syllabus will have different weightage you know this part questions are asked more this part questions are asked more like that nowadays questions come from you know uh, gs1 we have world geography in world geography sometime questions come from environment in third part you have science and disaster management there you get geography based question you don't have any clear cut you know balance or clear cut line between all these papers all these papers are interlinked for that every word in the syllabus you should have notes and along with that create a flash card flash card is like short notes like five lines there is a topic so for this this is a flash card so what i made you here women position issues government schemes legislations ngo this is the flash card so for every topic you need a flash card so before going to the examination you are preparing for gs1 you should only study because you don't have time morning gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 that is how the examination takes place do you think you can just sit and study the entire notes not possible so what you are going to do is whatever notes you are preparing you are going to have a flash card so that flash card alone you are going to revise before the examination so that that point you can like you know uh, revise it and go for the examination so this is what you are going to do with this syllabus syllabus is not many people will prepare for the examination without even looking at the syllabus that's the most bad thing you are going to do for the exam preparation process any exam you are preparing you should look into the syllabus you should know what is in the syllabus you should know every word in the syllabus fine this is the first and foremost thing you are going to do do it today itself number 1 next previous year question see many questions get repeated or modified from the old questions so old questions will give you two things number 1 kind of questions kind of questions is like they will ask you as discuss comment criticize 
critically analyze okay or elucidate so many kinds of words are discuss comment criticize critically analyze elucidate these are all having different meanings discuss is like you are going to just discuss if there is any scheme you are going to discuss the scheme comment is you are going to comment on the scheme positive and negatives you are going to speak if they are asking about comment criticizes you are going to talk about the negatives of that scheme and obviously you should give the way forward for that critically analyzes you are going to analyze the positives and negatives more negatives you are going to analyze since they are asking you critically and then you are going to give way forward elucidate is like properly you are going to give the step to step analysis of whatever is given with you know clear cut picture of what is the what is the thing you are going to discuss so everything has a different meaning where do i where do i get all these things from the previous year questions so proper understanding of previous year question is very much important because it's not like you are going to just give the answer for all the question in a same manner every question has a different meaning among themselves that you can understand from the previous year question definitely before going to examination not before going to just examination when you start the preparation itself you should do this previous year question first step is i have given you step by step first step is syllabus second step is previous year questions fine you can ask me ma'am previous year questions like uh, you can ask me like ma'am previous year questions uh, how can i understand ma'am see there is nothing different you are going to study for mains what you studied for prelims that only you are going to study for mains if you are studying india china relationship that is what you will be asked in a question related to international relations if you are studying about schemes related to women that is what you are going to write in detail in the mains see that is what i am telling you it is not that you are going to read the content new the content you have already studied you are going to just revise it now you are going to just add it now clear yes see whatever syllabus you are following i will tell you upsc syllabus please download it clear any academy can give their syllabus it is their perspective of that syllabus you can't say that this academy is the best this academy is the best first and foremost thing is upsc is the best keep that in mind you should have the upsc syllabus downloaded in your hand and you should know every words of that some academies what they do is like they want to uh, you know simplify it and uh, give it to you no that is not the thing this exam is not about simplification process this exam is you should understand that it is not about simplification or easy these words won't work here this is better understanding strategy and then proper planning this is these are the words you should follow here clear you can follow anything i'm not telling you you should not follow this you should not follow that but the must the first and foremost thing is upsc syllabus clear the writing for upsc examination so you are you have to follow upsc uh, documents fine fine so first and foremost thing is you will understand what upsc expects from you next is topers answers and discussions their answers their discussions we will do in our class also you should also do it by yourself clear next healthy discussions with peer fine so we have uh, you will be in a telegram channel you will be having your friends who are preparing do healthy discussions with them peer correction peer correction of answer is the best thing that can happen because everybody will have a different point of view please do share in upsc examination sharing of knowledge will help you in a very large manner please create a very healthy group among yourself and start preparing clear so do this i'm telling you this will definitely help you fine next now i have understood the syllabus i have also seen the previous year questions yes ramesh hello ramesh hello so now what i should do practice and strategy i'll tell you what many people create a mistake everybody will think that i did not study for mains and they will keep studying they won't write at all keep studying no writing this is the biggest mistake everybody will do i'll tell you why see you have to write 250 marks in 3 hours clear so questions will vary some will some in some paper it will be 125 plus 125 in some paper it will be 130 plus 120 it varies according to paper so in this situation 
you will minimum we will be writing minimum of 20 questions so this 20 questions you have to write in three hours so what are the two most important thing here number one you should write fast you should think fast sometime i will tell you you don't have time to think at all you should be writing very fast so how does this come only through practice this many people don't do they will just keep studying they think that i will intake all the data i will go and write it in the exam no never that will not work out you can't even write five questions to ten questions in the exam if you are just going to the examination straight so what you should do start from today writing writing should start from today itself it's okay first first week second week you won't be writing properly out of 15 marks, you will be able to write only for 2 or 3 marks. It's totally okay, but you should start. Ice breaking is the first and foremost thing. It's okay if you are not getting mark in the first or second week. Our target here is writing the exam better. The, uh, writing the exam best, it's not better. There is no place for better at all. Writing the exam best. So ice breaking, first and foremost thing, start writing. Write and then prepare. You just take any question. Previous year question itself will do. Take previous year question, read the question, study for that question alone and then write it, then correct it. Peer correction will do or give to one who will, you know, correct it and give you test batches. In an academy, you have test batches or go for iconic or plus. There you will have test batches, you know, proper people who have experience in correction. I can help you through that everything. Fine. First and foremost thing in the mains, it's mains is writing clear it's not studying if someone is telling you study for one month then write for two months i'll tell you wrong i'll tell you even for two months you will only be studying fine this is always that you should start writing from first itself it's okay if you are not able to write completely in the first and second week start writing first itself then improve where you are missing is the introduction not right is the conclusion not good where i'm missing okay i'm not thorough with this uh, society based questions i'm not thorough with disaster management questions so i will sit and study for disaster management i will go and write more questions in disaster management error and correction method only will help here if you are not committing any errors you can't correct for that first of all you should write the first and foremost thing is ice breaking do it today itself write any question start writing questions daily minimum of two questions two from gs and two from uh, optionals this is for people who are preparing for 2021 okay but 2021 prelims who are writing your mains this january your work is only to write gs and optional daily you know daily minimum of 10 to 15 questions in gs 10 to 15 questions in optional start writing 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 you should be keep on writing the people who are writing your mains this attempt this january start preparing now itself clear i'm telling you don't waste your time three months is actually not enough you know you october is already over today is ninth okay your exam is on jan second or third week let's take it on third week if it is on jan third week let's take like october november december only you have okay so january don't take it into consideration so three months you have to practice like anything you should be writing 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 paper writing correction see which which are all the points you are missing i will tell you what are all the important points you, you should cover in a paper that also i will tell you don't worry okay but this is what you should know improve speed speed is very important okay the distance between the mind and your hand should reduce what are you talking ma'am distance between your mind and hand means when you start practicing very well when you start writing again and again this writing practice and when you add content based on that what will happen is that your thinking time and your writing time will start synchronizing that it will be seen like you don't think at all you are just writing your answers in a flow that will come when you start preparing when you start practicing clear so please improve your speed everybody should attend every question don't leave one question also because you know in the mains gs papers who's the uh, you know uh, if you are seeing uh, people who are scoring uh, top ranks I, uh, ar1 also would have scored only 55 to 60 percentage of marks 
this itself is a very big achievement which means that if you are writing a 15 mark question they are giving you 7 mark means it's a it's a very big achievement 7 to 8 maximum of 9 is the achievement so in that case out of 15 they are only giving this in that you also if you are leaving questions already what will happen is that see in, in that situation what will happen is that you will you instead of writing for 250 marks you are writing for only 200 marks or something so already you have reduced 50 marks in that also you will only get half mark or something so that your rank will go very back you are just leaving one question 15 mark question or 10 mark question if you are leaving your mark will go very back that you know clearing the exam itself will become a very big question so first and foremost thing in your mind is you should attend every question every question you will be knowing an answer don't worry the thing is some question you know the best answer some question you know the partial answer with that part with that partial answer how to give the best outcome is what you should be thinking there it's not like there won't be any question that you have never studied you don't know about it at all that kind of questions you won't get mostly you will understand the question you won't have much content but you can manage with what content you have okay so that is what is all about means fine yes Collect more examples, recent updates using current affairs. Clear? We are asking you one question related to, uh, let's take energy efficiency. We are asking you questions like energy efficiency. You can't just write the static part. Government legislations, government schemes, international alliances and international conventions. These are the things which are going to fetch you marks. So what you are going to do is, for every words in the syllabus, you are going to collect your own, uh, you know, authenticated data like reports of international organization, government sources, government reports, Niti Aayog reports. For example, they are asking you about water, okay, Jal Jeevan mission. They are asking you a question related to Jal Jeevan mission. How will you write introduction? According to Niti Aayog's report, in 2020, majority of uh, metropolitan states will lose their groundwater resources. This is a Niti Aayog report. These kind of reports, you for water keep some reports with in your hand you should have some report related to water resources some report related to energy efficiency some reports related to women some reports related to corruption some reports or some international organizations uh, definitions or reports related to you know uh, let's take you know some ethical concept for everything you can prepare your own reports it's not like you know every, you can you should keep in mind all the reports all the governmental releases, all the governmental schemes, all the international organization, that's not possible. But what you can do is, you select the best international organizational reports or international organization definitions, authenticated source, governmental source, PIB releases, anything like this, but the latest it should be. Mostly the latest at least. So that for any question, you can take from your database and write, which is very easy. Am I right or not? Instead of searching among 1000, in that 1000 you just take 10 to 20 data which is very good for you. You are going to use that data alone and with that data you are going to give your best answer. Clear? They are not asking you a specific report. Start with World uh, Economic Forum's report. They won't tell you. If there is any question related to economics, if you have World Economic Forum, good. World Bank, good. So any report which you have you can take it and write in the introduction or any part because your answer will be evaluated based on the authenticated resource only. You can't give your own definition. You can't give your own data. Clear? So keep that in mind. What you are going to do is you are going to take, you are going to collect some reports, some definitions related to health. What is the recent data related to health in India? That you are going to take it and write. Keep it. So any question related to health, it might come. Anything related to health. Take and write that in the introduction. This is the very best thing. Your answer will look, will look awesome. You only know that. You only know that report. But examiner won't know that. Because in the exam, you will get one or two questions only from health. Right or not. That too, in same paper, you will get one question. The next paper only, you will get another question. Right? So you can use that data for both the questions. It is not wrong. But that data should be authenticated. That data should be very good and very relevant. You can't write some random data clear for introduction and conclusion or anywhere when you are starting to write these kind of reports you take your own reports make a list and memorize them and keep it in mind 
clear use it everywhere wherever you want okay next presentation this is during examination till now whatever we saw or before examination okay so first you are going to understand the syllabus prepare notes next previous year questions start practicing the previous year questions also discuss among uh, uh, among your friends or among the mentors you have you might have mentors discuss among them all these things next and then practice and strategy i told you what are all the important things you should keep it in mind how you should practice what are all the problems that might arise in the examination how you should overcome it all these things we saw clear next to presentation if i subscribe an academy iconic program mentors are chosen by particular student uh, an academy or it's my choice actually an academy will choose the best mentor for you okay they will choose it according to your preference only they will choose the best mentor for you okay like uh, you know uh, you will be getting mentors who are all top educators they only will be your mentors fine so you can also give your preference over there that option is also available okay yes next presentation coming to the examination now you have prepared well you have the content you have prepared you have given your practice session everything is fine now in the examination what you sh i should do fine in the examination the reality is that you should only add authenticated sources you can give your content that's fine but authenticated sources are more valued you understand world bank's report or gender gap report or niti aayog's report or some ministry's report some international organization anything so how you should write your answer is like you should you will be writing an introduction you need not mention it as an introduction but you should write an introduction don't give subheading like introduction and start you are going to write introduction so always keep it in mind you should only write point wise presentation and subheadings are must i will tell you how to create subheadings when i come to this point so what you are going to write is first you are going to write the introduction in the introduction part you should definitely write authenticated sources it is expected you to give a numerical data or any data from the reports or definitions by an expert okay so you are talking about uh, anything so this expert has said this this organization has said this that kind of authenticated sources don't write your own answer in terms of optionals also in terms of gs also it is always better you give the authenticated sources fine so what happens when you give authenticated sources is that the examiner might not know you okay the examiner will not know you the paper corrector will not know you definitely so when you are giving your answer they will have a doubt is it right or wrong but when you give an authenticated source okay this person knows it okay the person who has written this answer knows something better so introduction is the introduction is like your name card it is your first impression so introduction should always be the best introduction and conclusion should be the best for that it is always better to use some authenticated sources number 1 coming to conclusion it's always good to finish a positive form of conclusion even though they ask you critically analyze in critically analyze or criticized based question you will be writing all the negatives in that particular scheme or particular anything you are going to criticize it but in finally in the conclusion you have to write any positive note you have to write in the positive connotation only in the conclusion also you cannot say this scheme will not work at all kind of answer you should not write introduction and conclusion should be always the best the first and foremost thing you should keep it in mind is this authenticated sources are the must for that that's what i tell i told you already during the preparation process itself you have a notes you have a list of you know uh, all these things you don't you don't have much what you have corruption women issues uh, casteism based issues scheduled caste scheduled tribes tribes related concept or you have in economics you have uh, basic questions now this these questions from current affairs and all you have whatever in the current affairs itself you can write but general question is the general question is the concept here okay so national nutrition mission if there is any question related to national nutrition mission right world bank has released a report related to national uh, you know related to india's nutritional status what is that 
that this much percentage of adults are uh, obese this much this much percentage are stunted among children this much people are stunted this is like a common thing you can take it and write for national health mission also and nutrition mission also both these things so these kind of report only i am telling you take it and prepare it previously itself in the exam hall you cannot go and think so what are all the common data you can write okay so if you are writing about women in uh, related questions related to women you can write data according to national crime bureau of india these many cases are there domestic violence these these much cases are there reported and reported kind of authenticated data will do okay but see what is the question and write it relevant it's not like everywhere you can write world bank everywhere you can write niti ayog no take data keep it ready so that you can just pick it and write there you are not going to think in the examination you cannot think much you don't have time to think you have time only to write for that you should already already have thought and you should have already have prepared notes for it fine first second subheadings and point wise presentation you can ask me ma'am where can i go and think subheading don't worry most of the questions will be two or three lines like according to some report according to niti they itself will start like this according to niti ayog's report this is the this is the uh, status of national nutrition mission so what are all the suggestions you can give to improve the national nutrition mission if there is any question like that the subheadings you are going to take it from the question only you are not going to think much how many divisions are there in question all these divisions should be given equal importance you divide the questions according to the question itself properly and use them as the subheadings definitely subheadings should be there minimum of two subheadings for 10 mark questions maximum of three subheadings 15 mark question minimum of three subheadings maximum of five subheadings should be given clear so subheadings are must write it only in the point wise presentation don't go to paragraph kind of answers because the people who are correcting your paper okay they have to they are going to see many papers daily in that situation if you are writing in paragraph it's a basic psychology just take a material a material is given completely in paragraph another material point wise which material you will go and study obviously the point wise material you will go and study paragraph will be like you feel like you are going to search inside some key point but point wise is like you are going to take it from that the points are okay this point is right this point is right they'll keep correcting and going so subheadings point wise presentation is very important and this point also should not be like blah 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 it should be like comprehensive comprehensive means what you are telling what you are about to tell should be short and effective it's not short and sweet short and effective how for example instead of using a sentence complete sentence if you are able to use a word please use it okay that particular scheme is not efficient instead of writing that inefficient scheme that's all that scheme is not efficient inefficient scheme these kind of comprehensive words will give you more space to write you you should keep in mind this also you have word limit it's not like in the examination you won't have the problem of content at all you will have so much content the problem will be word limit only 250 words like you should write within 250 words only you can't write 300 400 words there this kind of comprehensive terms only will help you that will come when you start preparing the syllabus when you start reading the syllabus when you start reading when you start writing many uh, examinations when you get feedbacks from the paper corrector you will start understanding how to write comprehensively when you read more when you take more uh, when you observe more classes when you take more materials and start studying you will understand all these concept okay instead of writing it complete word start writing it in a you know more comprehensive manner complex start using complex words it's not like you should be very good in english some people might ask me ma'am i'm not that good in english how can i do the problem here is not the language keep it in mind you should write understandable comprehensive effective answers it's not like you should be writing so much complex words that even examiner could not understand no don't do that mistake your answer should be understandable at the same time very effective clear within that 250 word limit you should give your answer all the answer you want to give should be given that is what is important pictorial representation if there is any map needed in geography based question draw map 
If there is any flow chart will help you draw a flow chart. Fine. So keep that in mind. More kind of answer, answer, answer. Instead of that, start using map, flow charts, you know, some pictures or something will help you in a better manner. Legible handwriting. It's not beautiful handwriting I'm talking about. Legible handwriting. How? For example, some people will be writing like question. Some people will write like this will be Q will be small, very big. These kind of things. So what I'm telling you is all the letters should be of same size. Proper space should be given. Like for example, instead of writing as this is one type. Some people will write like this. Fine. So that is what I'm telling you. They are not expecting you beautiful handwriting. This proper distance among the words and the words should be of same size. That is what they are expecting you. And yes should look like yes. V should look like V. R should look like R. This or this. Whatever you want. Some people will write R as yes. They will be writing yes also like this only. R also like this only. Fine. That is what I am telling you. Don't do these kind of things. This is what you should look at. Your word should be legible. You should be able to understand what I am writing. At the same time, it should be of same size. That's all they are expecting from you. They don't want you to write it like in a proper cursive form. It should be joint. It should not be joint. That is not a problem at all here. Handwriting should be legible. Legible in the sense it is understandable and it is a neat presentation. Fine. And I will request you to use only two colors, black and blue alone. Don't use much colors. It's better even if you use only blue alone or only black alone. Anything is fine. Fine. So this is the concept. So don't use much colors like, you know, so much colors, uh, blue, red. No. For drawing also use pen only. Don't use pencil. Okay. Pen will do one color or maximum of two color, black and blue or black alone or blue alone. Anything is fine, which is which you are comfortable with. Okay. Don't use much colors and make your paper look very colorful. Here it is not the school examination. Here they expect you to be a person who is writing a very neat answer. And I will uh, suggest you to choose your pen now itself and start practicing in that pen only. For examination, don't take a pen which you haven't practiced. Clear? Because that will create a separate tension. Every small thing matters in the examination hall. Clear? What pen you are practicing, that can be any pen. There is no problem in terms of the cost of that pen. Whatever pen, 10 rupees pen, 5 rupees pen, 2 rupees pen, anything, whichever you are comfortable with, which you think is good. And the paper should not have the impression in the back side. Some pen will be like very light that you have to press and write. No impression on the back side. Use ballpoint pen, the pen which is not leaking. Some ballpoint pens, you know, like throw ink. Don't do that. Don't use that kind of pen. Even if you are using gel pen, gel pens are fine, but make sure that that gel ink is waterproof ink. Clear waterproof gel ink, but I will suggest go for ballpoint pen, dark color, uh, dark colored ink that do not throw ink on the paper. At the same time, it's smooth so that the opposite side, the back side do, does not have the impression. So what happened when you complete the paper, your paper will look a complete mess if it is having the impression on the other side. Okay, so start practicing it from now itself start learning which pen is which pen will suit you which pen is comfortable to you okay there are so many options it's not like only one pen there are so many options fine avoid using fountain pen because fountain pens are not waterproof and then uh, fountain pens sometimes might create a problem like ink leaking all these concepts so it's always better to prefer ballpoint or you know gel pen or anything which has a waterproof ink clear yes Next is equal important to questions and uniform distribution of efforts throughout the question. Fine. What is this equal importance to question? If you have 20 questions, for one question, you know the best answer. What people will do is they will just concentrate on that question itself for a very long time. If that is a 10 mark question, however best you write, even though you are writing the maximum, they can only give 10. Can they give 11 marks? Not possible. So equal importance to question number one. And uniform distribution of effort through question. How? So one question is having two parts. 
okay and they are asking what are all the uh, issues faced by women in india explain the governmental schemes related to issue these are the two questions in one question there are two parts so let's take this as a 15 mark question some people what they do they are not very much aware about the governmental schemes related to the issue they will keep on writing this uh, you know problems faced by women issues faced by women itself for 15 mark is like they will give you three pages for two pages they will only write about the problems faced by women and in one page they will write half a page they will write about the government scheme and they will write the conclusion here do you think they will give you proper marks no the marks are already split properly for introduction two marks for uh, main part this much marks five marks or something for the next part uh, governmental scheme five marks for conclusion three marks something like that have been already divided okay you should give EU uniform distribution throughout the question just because you know one part of the question well and the other part you don't know well don't keep on writing one part alone the best and the other part not that well that won't work okay equal importance to all the question uniform distribution throughout the question efforts throughout the question okay and attend all question for most important concept okay every question should be attended you should not leave any question every question should be attended properly here keep that in mind okay every question if you write every question only you are you are going to be evaluated to out of 250 okay if you leave two questions 30 marks will be out 215 marks 30 marks will be out so you will be evaluated out of 220 only so 250 out of 250 itself you will get only 100 to 115 20 kind of marks if you are evaluated out of 220 you will be getting 80 or 100 related marks only this is also very rare 100 it's also very rare you will get 70 80 kind of marks which will push you very back that there will be a doubt that even if you will clear the examination or not 20 marks will decide if you are into the service or not sometimes this 20 mark will decide what kind of service you will get do you understand so if you are seeing the rank list the marks will be like very minimum first and second second uh, rank holders will have two or three marks kind of difference only that is what i'm telling you you should attend all the questions for this you should understand what is mains examination i already told you prelims examination is about date uh, about decision making mains examination is about resource management how so you know some data okay so you are going to study about data about women you will be studying many data about uh, scheduled cast schedule drive you will be studying many data about uh, citizenship you will study many data about governance and governance good governance corruption related concepts you will study many data ethical concepts you will study many data science related you are going to have many data in your mind mains is about resource management how you are going to use these data and come up with a proper solution or come up with a proper answer how you are understanding the problem first and using your resources how you are coming up with the best solution that is what is means resource management here the resource won't be a problem you will have more many resource data is like your data flow will be very high here there is no problem with data at all no question will be like I don't have data about this every question you will have data just go and look at the previous year question every question you know about that it's not like you don't know about it at all but the problem is what is the best data you are going to choose and write there so when they are talking about women issues women empowerment or women issues they are talking impact of uh, let's take this question impact of globalization on family this you have it in the society based questions also it's not just uh, sociology or anthropology your society and social justice based question will be similar to some of your optionals also your essay will be helpful essay can be taking your uh, sources from your gs and your optional also so here every data you can use it from different subjects and write it and one more most and foremost important thing i will tell you is that for every question have a 360 degree approach how 360 degree approach how 360 degree approach fine now they are asking about uh, let's take some concept uh, for example okay let's take corona the very famous concept now just going is i am expecting at least one question related to uh, you know corona here okay 
one question about corona at least so they are asking about covid 19 impact of covid 19 on the uh, indian society or, uh, or or our country kind of question they are asking indian society or something so here you will only write about society many people only will write about society what is 360 degree approach write about economy because economy is linked with society write about health write about environment write about social institutions what social institutions what happened to religion many people who thought religion is the important thing many people who thought that i should go to temple are now not going to temple because of the fear of corona so there has been a change in the preference to social institutions marriages in india were done that you know they were spending so much money in the marriages and marriage was seen as one of the most important uh, thing in the indian society but now marriage for marriage 10 or 20 people are only allowed social institution so you have to write a question in economy point of view health point of view environment point of view social institution point of view polity point of view fine so wearing mask and we also have right to movement article 19 but now do we have this we have this but regional restrictions are there e pass get e pass fine so one question covid 19 everybody will write about health everybody will write about society okay but you will get a very beautiful answer only when you have a 360 degree approach that you should do it during the preparation process itself do you understand so everything will have a 360 degree linkage it's not like one one issue is only economical one issue is only political there is no such thing like that in our country or anywhere everything are linked with every other point of view so start thinking about in all the approach and start giving unique answers don't give answers that everybody will be writing okay when this question what is the impact of covid 19 on indian society question is asked everybody will write about what they will everybody will write about health everybody will write about social institutions okay but here how many people are writing about all these things that is one question many people will not write about economy so in economy what happened we had surplus once there was a news that we had surplus uh, you know uh, fiscal uh, surplus but actually why it is not because of export has increased import has decreased so we had surplus so these kind of points one one point two points two important points from all these things will make your answer so good nobody would have thought on that side so the main answer is not like the right answer the best answer will be given more marks that you can only create by having a 360 degree approach that comes in the you know the preparation process also in the examination process clear see this video again start preparing properly this is a very short video only i wanted to give you this because it's the right time for people who are writing mains this year or who are writing your prelims in 2021 or 22 your preparation should start parallelly prelims and mains preparation should start parallelly that you are examinations are awesome clear that is the concept here data is not the problem you have data you have studied many data start writing ice breaking is the first thing start writing from today minimum of two questions from gs and optional is the must weekly once you have to write minimum of three essays clear next class i will be coming up with the best essay writing strategy what are the types of essays how you should write your introduction how you should write your uh, main part everything i will be coming up with okay yes so thank you so much any doubt you can ask me if you have any doubt how to approach this subject ma'am or how to write this kind of questions ma'am if any if there is any doubt you can ask me now i will help you with uh, you know uh, understanding those kind of questions yes So I'll tell you subscribe for Iconic because you know it's the best thing you have to do in the preparation process, both mains and prelims preparation. What fine? 
see discuss is like you are going to just discuss it's a plain question okay discuss is a plain question elucidate means you have to give more data proper data like you know authenticated data about that scheme that uh, if they are asking elucidate this particular scheme you have to talk about which ministry and then who is the beneficiary and then you have to talk about what is the proper uh, what is the limit for that is there any conditions for that that kind of specific data should be given okay yes see join my telegram channel there we can discuss okay join the telegram channel so you can have that telegram channel in the description also fine there you have this general studies join your telegram channel in that general studies you have upsc with subha as the link join the telegram channel we can discuss detail there also okay fine any other doubts guys Yes, any other doubts you want to ask me? Fine. So I'm taking that uh, uh, the class was clear. So please look at this video again. Use all these points. Keep it in your mind. You can write the best main answer. Fine. the answer here the the thing is not about writing the right answer everybody will be giving the right answer but here the thing is about writing the best answer keep everything in mind whatever i told you so do not forget to subscribe so you use my code suba you get a 10 percentage of discount okay so thank you so much like this video share this video and we'll meet again in another beautiful session and uh, thank you so much happy meeting you all again thank you take care